okay? Mr. David Octavio Gandel, I say the full name because that is his name brand. Uh, he is a motivational speaker and he does this for a living or he was, he's doing other things. And Mr. David Gandel, who happens to be Puerto Rican, I just wanted to say that, has a management consultant and has been in the health club business for over 18 years. David is now a life coach, writer, speaker, as he is now a public figure, as he travels the country tra sharing his inspirational story. I won't get into that story because I want him to share it. How, uh, I think, you know, th this is the way I, I uh, define it. By God's grace, you're here. Okay, by God's grace, is here. And that has also inspired him then to go around and speak. So today, please, let's have a warm round of applause for Mr. David Octavio. Thank you, sir. Good morning, everybody. How you doing? Good morning. First of all, stand up. Yeah. Put your hands up. I give up. You're not under arrest. It's in the car. It's in the car, buddy. I promise. All right. You guys can relax. Just want to get some blood flow in you before we start. You guys can have a seat. So, like, uh, a great, uh, that was a great presentation. Thank you very much. I am a two-time cancer survivor. Oh. So, what I'm going to do today in a 40, 50 minute span, I'm gonna maybe go a little bit longer, but it's okay, lunch is not till one, so it's okay. We got a whole hour before lunch. Is something that I did for a long, long time. I used to, my degrees, by the way, from University of South Florida were from marketing management and speech communication. So I got to learn a lot about that, and then I went and put it into the market, and then I used it into my business. And I was able to do it over and over and over and over because I built different gyms and I actually got to manage different gyms. But here's the one thing I learned. I couldn't do it alone. Cannot be done alone. The president of this university can't do it alone. You and your classes and your whatever your duties are as an employer, as an employee, you cannot do it alone. If there's anything you take out of this today, is that you will never be able to grow until you allow others to help you. It's the bottom line. I'm not gonna sugarcoat it or anything like that. That is the bottom line. I would not be where I am if it wasn't for other people in my life empowering me and allowing me to grow and letting the rope go so I can actually grow with it and keep running. Okay, so the first moment, I'm gonna to try to make, this is a two day seminar by the way, I'm gonna shut it into 50 minutes or 40 minutes. Effective communication starts with leadership. You are a leader in whatever aspect you are. I don't know your position in this company, but you are a leader. So you have to act like a leader. So a couple of the things that I wanna talk about leadership is how to serve somebody else. See, everybody wants to be a boss. It's like, oh yeah, I'm a boss, but how do you serve somebody else? Why did you get into this company? Shout it out, why? Adventure. Adventure? Growth. Growth. Don't worry, we're here for growth, right? I hope. So, adventure and growth, what else? Satisfaction. Satisfaction. So, if you look at the words that I put in there, they don't really go with some of the communication points, right? Needs, we all have them. We have essential ones. Your beliefs, your emotions, and appreciating others' gifts and talents. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to shorten this because I can go on just one whole seminar on this. But needs and beliefs and emotions. How many people here on emotion Make decisions. Raise your hand. It happens. Okay. All of you should have raised your hands. Because they all take emotions to make that decision. Now, hold on. The, this, the emotion can be a bad one or a good one, correct? Okay, but you can have to make a choice. And you have to be prepared. And you have to have enough knowledge and enough wisdom to make that choice and decision. So your emotions will get you there. Your passion, your belief. You woke up in this morning. If you believe you're gonna have a bad day, what kind of day are you gonna have? Bad day. Okay, so it's not, this is not rocket science. That's 
an emotion as well. You woke up, you listen to music, you brush your teeth, you have a system that you do every morning, drink coffee, whatever it is that you do. And all of a sudden, on your way out, you hit your foot on a chair. Or you hit it on the bed post. Ow, already, something bad happened. You're late for work. Traffic comes on in the news, always something is going on in the traffic on 836, 826, something every morning. Already, you're in such a negative state of mind. But why did you get there? So you have to understand that these things take place before you even get to your job, before you even get in your car. The good thing is that you have to be grateful that you have the position you have. No matter if you're happy or you don't believe that that is where you're supposed to be. That is not your passion. That is not your purpose. I get that. But you have to be able to grow where you are. You have to be able to believe that if you're a janitor, you got to do the best job you can as a janitor. If you are a teacher, you have lives that are in front of you that you have been blessed to be able to impact. If you start believing that, your day will go better. Pick people in your classrooms, pick people in your leadership teams that have same beliefs so they can support you. Recognize your gifts and talents so you can empower them. You're all gifted and you're all talented, but are you using them? That's the question. Yes. Are you? Yes. Some of you. So leadership is a big deal. Recognizing employees need to be part of something. Doesn't everybody want to be part of something? People like sports here? Of course. Yeah. Okay. Miami Dolphins. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> New York Yankees. But here's what happens. The, the players that make it and have a great legacy are part of a team. They recognize that they cannot win nine full innings without each position doing their part. I always said life is a sport. It's a journey as well, but it's a sport, meaning that you have teammates that will lift you when you need them. But you also have people that even though you don't believe they're inspiring you, they might be pushing you down, they're just testing you. Testing you. Why do you do what you do? What is your purpose, what is your belief, and what is your cost? This is more, a little deeper, and I can't do the whole thing today, but why do you do what you do? Adventure, whatever it is. Here's the thing, if you're not happy where you are now, be happy, be grateful, and use this as a preparation and a platform for what you really wanna do. But whose choice is it that you're not happy? Ours. Myself, Correct. You are the only one. Not your girlfriend, not your boyfriend, not your boss, not your kids, not anyone else. Not your bully in school. No one else has the right to take your joy. It starts with communicating with yourself to make sure you let yourself know how special you are. To let everybody know how far, to let yourself know how far you've come already to make the decisions that you have. You cannot make a decision or a choice without knowing where you're going and believing in the outcome that could be a positive one. I think everybody in this room will have somebody in their life that tell them you can't do something. How many? That somebody told you you couldn't do it. Somebody told you you're not good enough. Somebody told you, you you're just not smart enough. Somebody always in your life, I promise you, and if it hasn't happened yet, I'm sorry, it's gonna happen at some point because your dreams are bigger. But here's the funny thing is they don't know because they can't know, they're not you. So whatever visions and dreams you have, you don't need to tell everybody about it, but you have to continue to believe in them. So how does that deal with communication? If you don't believe that you're something better, 
if you don't believe that you have a purpose, if you don't believe that there's, there's a purpose why you're working for this company right now, that I hope you believe in. If not, why are you here? Do you partake that into other people, into your students, into your friends, into your coworkers, into even the president of the company? It all starts with decisions that you make. And your communication starts with you. Okay? So, the next one is consistent. You think, you act, you communicate the exact way. What happens when you're negative all the time? Does anything positive happen? No. Okay. So if you don't think positive and you don't communicate in that way, if you don't stand up when somebody walks in a room, if you don't smile at somebody in that morning, you never know what that person's going through. You really don't. Stand up. Now, you had a, the worst day you've ever had yesterday. Your car broke down, your girlfriend left you, something happened. You're going to work today, but give me the feeling of what you're feeling inside and walk towards me. I got nothing negative. Repeat after. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> what happened to my face? Thank you. <laughs> give me a big round of applause. <laughs> what happened to my face when he gave me a handshake? I had a smile on my face. And what happened? Why? Because, listen, as human beings, you're going to emulate. You're going to sympathize. You're going to think, for that one second, you're, even if you don't like them. I know, some of you don't. It's okay. But even if you don't like them, you're going to look at his face and say, what's wrong with him? What happened to him? I just started my morning. Even if you don't like them, you're going to put enough thought, why? Because that's just part of who we are, it's human nature. Enough thought to just emulate his feeling and already now you're taking it in. Even if you don't like him, I promise you that. Walk into a room with a smile, walk into a room with confidence, walk into a room like you own it. Okay, that doesn't mean you have to be conceited or anything like that. Walk with confidence and you'll see people around you even change their mood. Right? But be consistent about it. Don't come in one day and be, yeah, how you doing? Everything is great. You're Anthony Robbins today. The next day you come in with a frown. The next day you come in like, you know, like something went wrong. The cup's lost. I'm sorry. Something will get you down. So don't ever forget that. Because this is not your personal life. This is your work life. So let me share a little bit about my testimony. I took a picture at 124 pounds after 14 chemos. I was given a death sentence. And I smiled at that picture. Why did I smile? Because something inside of me said, this is your testimony. You're supposed to smile through your worst times in life, guys, ladies and gentlemen. You're supposed to, why? Because you never know what life you're gonna impact at your worst. Find hope and live with purpose that you can impact someone's life. Why is this important to me to do today? I haven't done a business setting in a while, but I'll tell you why it's important. Monica is an amazing person. She's done a great job, but here's why it's important. You get a chance to impact so many lives. That's what's important to me. Because when I step into a room, even if 99% of you don't get it, one person will. I hope, I pray, one person. I hope more than that. But what happens is that you get to impact lives for the future. So start with believing in your company. Start with why you're here. If you're good, great. If you're not good, find a way to get good. Find a way to be grateful. And I tell you, communication starts from the top. You are either a leader or do you lead? Are you a leader or do you lead? I would like to say I'm a leader. But do you lead? Sometimes. Exactly. Are you a leader or do you lead? Both. Both. Okay, what do you do? What's your position? Director of marketing and development. 
Marketing, hey, there you go, that's my degree. There you go. If you're in marketing, you better lead. Why? Advertising, marketing, getting the word out. But you have to communicate consistent, you have to be a leader. But all of you are leaders. All of you. To one degree, you're a leader. But the question is, do you lead? And do you lead all the time? Being a leader, guys, doesn't mean to your boss. You can be a leader cleaning toilets. You can be a leader getting supplies. You can be a leader getting food for somebody else. When I started in the gym business, when I was in college, I cleaned bathrooms, I cleaned the gym, I cleaned the paths, I cleaned the aerobic room. I ran the front desk, I sold memberships, I did personal training, I did aerobics, I uh, did everything, pretty much, without any title whatsoever. And guess what, it was commission only. There's no such thing anymore, right? It was commission only, why? Because I wanted to do it. You do things sometimes not for the money, but because you believe that this is something you want to do. And I was always a leader in high school and college and everything like that, but I loved leading people and I found out the best way to lead people is to do by example. Clean the windows, clean the toilets, clean the thing. It wasn't my job. My job was to set up appointments, sell memberships, and do personal training. But if my gym wasn't clean, was it easy to sell a membership? No. Nope. If the bathrooms look a mess and the locker doors were open and I took somebody in there, would you buy a membership? So I learned all the little things matter. And the employees started to look at me because they knew that I wasn't getting paid to do that. I communicated by actions. So there's a couple of things we touched on. The way you act, right? The way you carry yourself and your actions. That's how you lead. Okay, so what's gonna happen is, a few years go by, I get my degree. I wanna leave the gym. I have all these companies that want me. I did internships while I was in college. I, I won't go into the companies, but it was high-end companies at that time. And I'm going to give my resignation after I get my two bachelors. And the owner comes up to me and says, oh no, you're not going anywhere. The owner. I didn't even have a relationship with him, guys. But for four years, he saw me do when no one else did. And finally, I got recognition. That's a message for some of you today. Don't expect her to give you recognition. Don't expect her to give you recognition. Don't expect even Monica sometimes to give you recognition as the president or anyone on the top, our, our marketing director. Don't expect him to give you recognition. When you expect and you assume that you're doing something for somebody every single time, they will let you down. But when you do it for a greater cause and know that this is a position that you should be grateful for and do the best, I promise you, not only would you be better at work, not only will people treat you better at work, but the company's gonna grow and at some point, someone's gonna stop you like they did me. Wait, hold on, you can't leave me. What do you want? How great is that? What do you want? What salary do you want? What commission structure do you want? What part of the gym do you want? Do you think I thought about that for four years? No. I didn't. When I went through cancer and I was at my death door, all these people came into my life. Why? I was shocked. Calling me, texting me, coming to the hospital, coming to my apartment, speaking to my parents, fundraising for me. All kinds of things were going on. Why do you think that happened? Anybody want to take a shot at it? Because at one point you were impacting somebody's life. 
I couldn't say any better. And I didn't even know it. I didn't know it. Just because I was nice to somebody, just because I spent time with somebody, just I, I imparted knowledge in somebody like I'm doing with you guys today. And you guys are going to impart this knowledge to your students, to your coworkers. You're going to remind the other group that's not going to be able to be here. You're going to impart that knowledge in them. And all these people came to my aid. And God revealed, this is what you did. And some of them, one by one, were able to tell me what I actually did. And it didn't make me feel like I was as powerful. It humbled me. Because just like I did in college, I did not know that that gentleman was going to want me to run his million dollar club. I ended up leaving there, opening multiple gyms for other investors. And the gentleman that was my manager when I was in college was now running Gold's Gym, which at the time was a big deal. Now it's not, but back then. He was the regional manager. And he called me over and over and said, I need you on my team. What do you want? I'll give you my best club. And I ended up taking it. And years later, I became a regional. And then that was my career. I took over gyms, I turned them around, and I got to the position, not the highest position that you can get. And I was in charge of more than you guys and employees. But what I learned was that it was consistent training. It was consistent communication. It was never allowing my position to be higher than them because they could be me. What I was looking for is looking for people that were literally doing the little things, not expecting anything in return. I've had friends of mine that want the journey closer, close to me in, in the business world, and I've had Owners of companies, give them the keys. I want to leave a legacy that's all yours. I'm out, I'm retiring. These are the things that you continue to see when you're in a state of positive thinking and you believe that there is something bigger at the other side. So do the little things. Do I have enough time? I'm good? Mm -hmm. Can I keep talking? <laughs> yep. So do the little things and part you know, but also acknowledge somebody's gift. If somebody you think is good at marketing and good at whatever, relay that message to that gentleman right there. And again, I'm sorry I don't know a lot of you, but relay that message. Why? Because he might need somebody that's going to be able to help him in his direct, in, you know, his, his position. When you look for someone's gifts, you know, you're supposed to relay it to other people to empower the company. If there's no company, would you be here? No. Okay, so you have to tell yourself, first, do I want to be here? Two, is this what I want to do? Okay? Three, am I willing to do what it takes? And four, you're going to be obedient. Okay? If you want to be here, Give it all when you're here. If you don't want to be here and there's something else you want to do, still give it all while you're here because you don't know what the future is going to take and you don't know what person is going to. There were so many people that would go to the gym, business people, millionaires, that would look at me managing a health club and say, what would it take for you to leave this business? Come work for me. Do you know the reason I stayed in the gym? because I was changing lives. And that was my dream when I was a kid. I didn't know how. I just knew that by training, by helping them, spending time with my employees, clearing them of whatever worry they had, training people one-on-one. -on -one. It wasn't just personal training physically. It was spiritual, it was mental. A lot of it's mental, guys. If you guys don't even want to go, then don't go. When people walked into the gym, they would say, I want a membership. I said, no, you don't. You don't want a membership. <laughs> you want to change your life. There is something that you want to change. Either the doctor told you that you need to, or because you don't feel good about yourself, or your partner left you, or whatever it is. You made a decision. I need to go, and it's a what? Emotional decision. 
right? So you go, you don't go for a membership. So what did I do? I sold personal training. I sold a service. What do you guys do? You sell what? But it's still a service. Don't ever forget that. You're servicing other people. You're giving to other people. You're empowering other people. You're giving them knowledge. There's a lot of great teachers out there and there's a lot of bad ones. And it's sad that you we see the bad classrooms, but I know teachers that have done such a great job with their kids. And I'm thankful for the ones that I had. But you know what I did? I used to go to their classroom when they weren't expecting me. My college professors, I introduced myself at the beginning of the year, not at the end when I needed an A. No, not in the middle when I needed extra credit. I wanted the beginning. I wanted to know that this person had my best interest. And even when they had, didn't have it, at least I already knew it. So I knew what I had to do to change it. And I kept showing up at their door to get more. And at the end, when I graduated, a lot of them were my mentors. But it started with, I had a blessing that I had great parents that taught me education, taught me faith, taught me a lot of things. Some of you might have people in your life that didn't have those people. And that might be your job. Not just teaching them, not just guiding them. Your job might be to mentor them, to get them through a, a tough situation. Because at the end of the day, a job is a job. Your life is worth more. And when you take your job to the point that you're able to see something better and bigger as changing someone's life, and you have that opportunity because you're in a college, doesn't matter what position you have, you can lead. And you will lead, but you have to make that choice. You have to make those decisions, okay? So I hope as a boss that I wanted to have this uncomfortable conversation with an employee. They weren't doing the right thing, or they weren't coming to work on time, or whatever, whatever the situation is. And it was uncomfortable for me. So if, if you think it's uncomfortable for you, it's, it's uncomfortable for them. Okay? And then what happens is, what you just described is what? An emotion. They have emotions too. There's a, I want to I wanna just between a boss and a leader. And I'm going to come back to finish that question. A boss drives employees, depends on authority, inspires fear. Says I, places blame for the breakdown, knows how it's done, uses people, takes credit, commands, says go. That's a boss. A leader coaches employees, depends on goodwill, generates enthusiasm, says we, fixes the breakdown, shows how it's done, gives credit, asks, and let's go. Let's go meeting together. Okay, I wanted to share that with you. You have to figure out how that relationship, before the problem starts, meet with your boss. You guys need to communicate before the problem starts. And you have to share with her what is your position in certain things. Because what happens is when you get to that point and they are, you get those butterflies, that means your relationship wasn't close enough. That means that she's not really seeing what you're doing. She's not even seeing the job you're doing. She's focused or he's focused. I don't know if it's a she or he. I'm saying they're focused on the problem. And what are they doing? They're imparting on you. The breakdown. Was this you? Did you do this? What happened to this? Okay. Get, you have to have a communication relationship with your boss. That means you have to share certain things. It doesn't have to be your whole personal life. You have to share certain things. And also, my biggest thing that I love for my employees were they, when they came to me and shared with me ideas and things that they had that they could work. And what I would tell them was this. Do what I expect from you first. Get that done. Finish it. And any other ideas you want to do, go for it. Let's see if they work. But because your boss is responsible they have responsibility. You have to make sure this gets done first. So before your ideas and before your things you want to import, do what they tell you to do first, finish it, 
In marketing, that's a big deal. You have different things that you have to get done for that campaign to work. And then what happens? Then you can try new things. But share those things with them after you do your part. But don't get emotional, that's the answer, about the conversation. Remember that you're believing in what you're doing. And you're helping people, or you're doing your job or work, and you have to finish it. So the best thing to say is, can this wait till end of the day? Remember your tone. They can't see you, so it's not like, hey, can you wait? No, they're not seeing you. There's no connection. There's no body language. On the phone, watch your tone. Don't be defensive. It's not your fault. Even if it is your fault, wait till the end of the day. Because then the rest of the day is damaged. So make sure that your tone is calm and explain, please, can this wait till the end of the day or can this wait an hour because I am doing this, this, and this. Not, you don't know what I'm doing. That changes everything. Because now you're feeding into... Exactly. Correct. Okay. Any other questions? There's a company hired you. That's, you have to be grateful for the employment that you have. But past that, I said before that, you have to look at the opportunity that you have. Because the opportunity that you have is faculty to impart your knowledge and your wisdom onto other people. That is a blessing. And not everybody has that opportunity. So that's why I said that before the company. But I want you guys to realize that without your students, is there a college? No. no. Without your students, do you have a job? No. Okay. That's what I meant by company. Because you also have to look at that. But is that your concern? No. Your concern, and here's what people forget. Your concern is to make sure that you first evaluate your position and write down everything that you're supposed to do. Okay, plan. If you don't plan, you will fail, I promise you. Make sure that you're doing your part. So as faculty, you probably have eight hands going in different directions, right? But make sure that you're checking every single hand. And make sure that, again, remember to come because of the people that lives you change. And that's what I did. But before I got to that point, I had to do the work. You always have to do the work to get to that point. For people to believe in you that much and give you that free will, you have to do the work. So find out what your employer needs from you and expects from you. Make sure you do that part and then you have free will to do yours. And again, like you said, you are doing a lot for, again, your, your purpose is not the job. I get that and that's why I, I always work that way. And I was always successful because of that. Thank you, thank you. Correct. So you have to get their attention. <laughs> if you do not have someone's attention, I think I'm assuming that most of you have been in a relationship before, and your partner is not listening to anything, even though you're saying the exact same thing that she's saying or he's saying, but they are not listening because they're not, they're not open to it. So you have to be able to, when you speak to somebody, and we were talking about that, your tone of voice, if they are not opening to hear your excuse because that's how it's going to come out, they're not going to listen to it. So sometimes you might have to give in and stop what you're doing, but you have to find a time to get back to your boss. Maybe not that day. Can we meet? Can we talk? Okay? And then you show your passion for your position and for your knowledge that you have right now that you want to do. But also remember, people like statistics. You know, in marketing, we love numbers. We want to see that. So whatever it is that you're doing, show them. Start with the positive parts. Don't start with the negative. You want the good news or the bad news? No, you always want the good news, okay? Always want that. So, but again, make sure that they're willing to listen. And that for that in marketing, we have to get their attention. So doing um, events at the college and, you know, just maybe health fairs or, or, or you know, job fairs or whatever, things like that that will work to bring people to the university so they're willing to listen because if they're not there, you know, they won't, okay? So um, one more thing I wanted to touch is that evolution and change, real quick. In order for you to evolve, what has to happen? <laughs> so I wanna make sure you people know that. We're here for growth. Growth will only take through change. 
If you think that you cannot change, then you're not growing. Let me give you an idea. If, if when a woman says to a guy, you don't want to change, well, guess what? And you say, I don't want to change, you're right. You will change after that relationship's over. You will always change. Change is part of the evolution, like anything you want to say. It's growth. You change your lifestyle, you change your eating habits, you change your workout regimen, you change, God bless you. You change your system every morning, you brush your teeth earlier, you do whatever it is. You are changing, you're evolving, and you're growing. And the more you grow, some people next to you will not grow as fast as you. Don't ever forget that. And even if you outgrow your boss, halt. They're still your employer. Remember that. But do it with kindness. Do your part and then share with people some of your ideas and knowledge at the right time. Okay? Did you learn anything today? Yes. Okay. I hope you did.